What's up you guys, this is Alex Parkinson with the Zion Company and in this video I want to share with you guys three things when combined together will cause you to break through spiritually and walk blessed all the days of your life. Uh, I want to encourage you to please like this video. That tells YouTube that this is a good video and it should be pushed out for other viewers. And I also want to welcome you if you're a guest and encourage you to subscribe to my channel and help me reach my first 1000 subscribers that would mean so much to me and of course if you like this video go ahead and leave a comment or if you don't like this video leave me a comment let me know and uh and i will be sure to pray for you and bless you in jesus name i'm just kidding but uh guys i've got a good video for you um i want to uh just dive right into this topic today and uh, if you follow me on Instagram, you've seen that I've been talking a lot about fasting. I'm currently on a corporate fast with my church, and I want to uh, just talk a little bit about uh, something related to fasting today, and I believe that it's going to bless many of you watching. So uh, without further ado, I wanna share three things that will change your life spiritually. If you practice these three things, and if you combine them all together, you will walk blessed. Uh, these three things are found in Matthew chapter 6. This is an important chapter to study, uh, especially on the topic of fasting. But it's uh, not just fasting that we need to recognize, but there are other things that are kind of intertwined with the practice of fasting. Jesus says in Matthew chapter 6 verse 3, when you give... He says in Matthew chapter 6, verse 5, when you pray. And then in Matthew chapter 6, verse 15, it is when you fast. So there is prayer, there is fasting, and there is giving. I believe that all of these three things combined together is a dynamic, dangerous combination to the forces of hell. I believe that when a believer practices these three things, uh, their life will radically shift and change for the glory of God. Uh, I believe that when we fast, it should always be coupled with prayer because without prayer, uh, we are just starving ourselves. Um, when we fast, we are pushing away the plate in, in, uh, in, in exchange. We are going to the Lord in prayer and time to feast upon his word. But Prayer with fasting is great. Those two are great together. But when we add this third component of giving in the mix, it is so powerful, my friends. And I want to share with you guys some things I've been finding in the word relating to uh, these three things. And so uh, the Bible says in Ecclesiastes 4.12 that a threefold cord is not easily broken. And I believe this is a threefold cord. Uh, that Jesus has given us. But I believe that these three practices deal with three specific things. It'll cause us to be conquerors over three specific areas in our life. And I want to read this um, from 1 John chapter 2, verses 16 through 17. I'll put the scriptures uh, in the description here so that you guys can uh, go read these yourself. But in 1 John chapter 2, verse 16, it says, For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the boastful pride of life, is not from the Father, but is from the world. The world is passing away, and also the lusts. But the one who does the will of God lives forever. So three things. We have the lust of the flesh. We have the lust of the eyes, and then we have the boastful pride of life. I believe that the threefold cord of prayer and fasting and giving breaks all three of these. And so I'm going to explain here uh, in, in, um, in this little breakdown I have. First, we have the lust of the flesh. Fasting obliterates the lust of the flesh, which... The lust of the flesh could be categorized as sensual gratifications. These are cravings of the flesh. These are uh, addictions. You may look at pornography. You may look at uh, alcoholism, drug addiction. 
These things can be lust of the flesh, overeating. This is why fasting is so important because when we fast, we are volunteer, voluntarily um, resisting food, which our body craves. And what we're doing is we're training ourselves to be dominated by our spirit and not by our flesh. So when we choose to engage in fasting, a season of fasting, which is uh, biblically to close the mouth and to resist food, when we enter into a season of fasting, we are training ourselves on how to be dominated and to live by the Spirit of God. And it will uh, give us the power and the self-control to resist the lust of the flesh. The second thing is the lust of the eyes. This could be categorized as greed. This is where giving comes in. Uh, giving, when we practice radical giving, which is a lifestyle of generosity and uh, faithfulness in giving uh, unto God, what happens is we begin to break what is called the lust of the eyes. The lust of the eyes is covetousness. It's this you know desire to um, always covet and, and chase after material things. It could also be um, you know uh, just this greediness or this lack of generosity that maybe we foster in our lives, where we you know don't have a desire to give or be generous. What giving mixed with fasting will do is it will break the back of greed and it will unlock blessings in our lives. And so I'll share some testimonies with that in a, in a little bit. Um, but the third thing is the pride of life. The pride of life is simply walking in a proud attitude which says, I know what I'm doing. I can do this on my own. I don't need God's help. I don't need uh, God's empowerment. I can do this. And what that does is it resists God. In fact, or well, the Bible says God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. So when we pray, we are humbling ourselves before the Lord, recognizing our need for him. And when we pray mixed with fasting and mixed with giving, it is this combination where we find ourselves going low before the Lord. This is why prayer and fasting is self-humbling. Uh, David said, I humble my soul with fasting. And so uh, you do not want God to humble you because God can humiliate you, uh, but <laughs> it's far better to humble yourself before the Lord because when you humble yourself before the Lord with fasting, God gives you grace. But I can tell you guys from experience, um, anytime I've ever been in a financial battle, for example, I will take uh, one to three days and I will, you know, go to the Lord with prayer and fasting. And I will also, uh, you know, choose to sacrificially sow a seed or to give to someone else in that period of time. And between, uh, uh, or sorry, before the three days are even over with, God comes through with an amazing breakthrough with finances in a way that only he could do it. I've seen that so many times where uh, God just comes through to bless um, but there is a character in the Bible who I just recently, I, I just recently found this, you guys. Um, there's this character in the Bible who practiced all three of these things. And I literally just saw this recently. I've read this story many times, um, but a, a, you'd be surprised at a different, how a different translation can unlock meaning and provide greater context to what was happening. Um, in Acts chapter 10, we see a man by the name of Cornelius. In Cornelius, in Acts 10, verse uh, 30 and 31, it says, And Cornelius said, Four days ago I was fasting until this hour, and at the ninth hour I prayed in my house. And behold, a man stood before me in bright clothing and said, Cornelius, thy prayer is heard in thine alms are had in remembrance in the sight of God. And alms uh, is, uh, is giving, his, his charitable giving. But here we see Cornelius was fasting, was praying, and the angel that stood before him said that your giving is remembered in heaven. Fasting, prayer, and giving, all of these three things mixed together. This is amazing because Cornelius wasn't even saved yet. He was not yet a believer, and I want to, you know, make it clear right now 
that fasting, praying, and giving will not buy you salvation. You cannot buy salvation or earn salvation. That comes by grace through faith. But here is this man who feared God, even though he didn't know Jesus Christ yet, even though salvation hadn't been, you know, imparted to him yet. He had not yet heard the gospel. Here is this man who fears God and has a prayer life where he wanted to seek God. He was humble before the Lord. He gave generously. And we learn in verse 30 that he was on a fast on that particular day where the angel appeared to him. This is very interesting because though you cannot buy salvation, what you can do is you can attract heaven in your life by a lifestyle of prayer, fasting, and giving. What happened to Cornelius is he got God's attention. God was attracted to that man. And he said, I, I want to uh, visit this man and I want him and his household to be saved. And so I believe there was something about this lifestyle that he had that attracted salvation. And he, you know, obviously heard the gospel uh, through Peter. Peter was also fasting on the rooftop when he went into a heavenly trance and he saw before him like a curtain, um, all of the animals and the father said, kill and eat. And obviously this was a revelation of the Gentiles receiving uh, salvation. So simultaneously, Peter is on a fast. Cornelius is on a fast. They're both seeking the Lord. And what happened is there was this congruence, you know, this, this syncing up um, of events where uh, Peter was led to preach the gospel to Cornelius. And the Bible says him and his household were saved. So what do I want to say to you? Uh, in this video. What I want to say is a lifestyle of prayer with fasting and with giving will attract heavenly realities in your life. It will cause you to walk under an open heaven. It will cause you to live blessed. It will cause you to break the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the boastful pride of life. Those are three snares that really get people in this life. You know, with ministers, they call it the gold, the glory, and the girls, you know, and whatever you want to call it. But there are these three areas where we get hung up. We, we lust over the things that our flesh craves, and we lust over things that our eyes see, and then we are always going to be tempted to become proud. But these three things will break those areas and will cause you to be triumphant and victorious in Jesus' name. So I want to pray over you right now. You can let me know what you thought about this video in the comments. And uh, I want to bless you as I close. And feel free to just share this with uh, a friend that you think this will uh, minister to. But Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I want to thank you for the revelation of prayer, the revelation of fasting and the revelation of giving all mixed and combined together i pray for the grace of god to come upon the viewer right now to slip into these truths and i thank you god for visiting families just like cornelius i thank you for family revival i thank you for the blessing of god uh settling in homes as as people partake in these practices and begin to seek you i thank you god that you are a rewarder of those who diligently seek you. So in Jesus' name, I say be blessed. I ask the Holy Spirit now to just come upon you and, and to stir your heart to go into the secret place uh, in a whole new fashion and with a whole new grace in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah, my friends. I pray that this video blessed you. And uh, I want to thank you for tuning in and watching. Definitely subscribe if this, uh, you know, touched your heart for uh, more videos to come. So God bless you guys. I'll talk with y'all soon.